WWE wrestlers that nobody effed with, the Road Warriors. Now you really have to be a tough SOB in the WWE if Haku is afraid of you. Hawk and Animal were one of the most popular acts for the short period they were in WWE. While they aren't extreme examples that display their toughness in real life, the former WWE Tag Team Champions were known as men who weren't afraid to speak their minds and stand up to Vince McMahon. In fact, their first run ran only for two years because the tag team felt that the Rocco gimmick was atrocious and walked out without caring about the repercussions. When you look back at the Road Warriors' time in WWE, then you'll notice that their two runs were complete duds. The second run saw the duo quit because of the disgusting angle that played off Hawk's issues with substance abuse. The controversial angle even saw Hawk fall off the Titantron because of his alcoholism. Fed up with the BS they had to deal, Hawk and Animal left without any regrets. But sadly, Hawk passed away in 2003 and Animal in 2020, but the stories recounting these men have painted them as respectful colleagues who had no problem decking the boss in the face if they needed to. Haku Haku isn't a particular name you'd hear from fans. Though the former tag team champion has competed in WWE, WCW and New Japan Pro Wrestling, he didn't necessarily stand out in the eyes of audiences. However, plenty of wrestlers weren't afraid to admit that Haku scared the absolute living daylights out of them. There are plenty of wild stories about Haku that give them good reason to be nervous. One of the most infamous was Haku attacking Brutus Barber Beefcake in the shower after the WWE Hall of Famer told management that Haku was too stiff during their match. But the insane stories about Haku don't even end there. There's even a rumor that Haku got into a bar fight and exemplified his power by shoving his fingers down some guy's throat and ripping out his teeth. What's crazier than going Dragon Ball Z on someone's teeth or finding a bunch of cops while being pepper sprayed? Now picture this, you're trying to be a good Samaritan by breaking up a fight but end up getting caught in the melee. Suddenly, you're fighting off eight police officers. That's the situation Haku is in. Some cops used pepper spray to try and keep him down, but according to Rick Steiner, Haku wasn't an ordinary man that night as he opened his mouth, closed his eyes, and breathed it all in. Steiner deemed Haku the toughest man alive after that night, and plenty of other wrestlers have shared the same sentiment about the wrestling legend. Ron Simmons When you think of Ron Simmons, you remember his time in the APA or Nation of Domination. Ron Simmons was always portrayed as a badass, but playing a badass on screen doesn't always translate to real life. But that can't be said about Ron Simmons, who was heavily feared by all the boys backstage. According to Kurt Angle on his podcast, he, Ron Simmons, was heavily feared. He was a guy that could kick anyone's asses in the locker room, so I think everybody had a lot of respect for him for that particular reason, and he was actually a great worker. He really was. The fear from Simmons wasn't just the WWE locker room. Arn Anderson backed up Angle's claims by stating that the Steiner brothers were afraid to rib the former WCW World Heavyweight Champion because he would probably snap their necks if they pulled any of their hazing stunts. Now, while Simmons doesn't have any insane stories like fighting off cops while being pepper sprayed, he has beaten down a few wrestlers who crossed the line. One of the most notable was the infamous Public Enemy match on Sunday Night Heat. Rumors say that APA worked the shoot match because the team was not showing enough respect backstage. JBL himself confirmed that the match turned into a shoot because they walked in assuming that it was a fight. Whatever the case, APA beat the former ECW and WCW tag team like a government mule. Ron Simmons was a no-nonsense badass who lived his APA persona in and out of the squared circle. Brock Lesnar No one is surprised that Brock Lesnar is legitimately a beast. The former WWE champion didn't need to have an incredible UFC run to back up his claims of toughness. It isn't the fact that Brock Lesnar could break most men in half with ease. It's that Lesnar hates people. This is not something that he keeps secret either. Lesnar confirmed this on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast, and it's the reason he lives in the middle of nowhere or barely goes out in public. He even threatened to punch his former WWE head of security if someone came up to him and asked for an autograph. The most infamous story is a plane ride from hell where Kurt Hennig kept goating Lesnar into fighting him. The Beast easily made the former Intercontinental Champion regret that decision, but the former WWE Champion isn't shy about stepping up to bigger wrestlers. He checked Braun Strowman with a couple of real punches in their Universal title match at the 2018 World Rumble. But if you think that Vince McMahon was the only one who could tame the Beast, then you're sadly mistaken. Lesnar angrily tossed the Universal Championship at the former CEO following his WrestleMania 34 match against Roman Reigns. Brock isn't particularly a bad person per se, but he isn't shy about showcasing his anger and frustration. Harley Race Harley Race did not have an easy life. He had polio as a kid, the WWE Hall of Famer also survived cancer and beat death following a near-fatal car crash. Sometimes adversity is what defines a tough man and during the Territory days, there's no shortage of stories about Harley's toughness behind the scenes. 
Even Andre the Giant was afraid of Harley Race. He was known for having a gun in his bag and he wasn't afraid to show it. Just ask Hulk Hogan. The former WWE Champion recalled the time Harley threatened to shoot him on the Joe Rogan podcast. We pumped the single into Kansas City for 8 weeks. Harley Race had been there for like 18 years. He was the NWA Champion. I'm the champion of the world and he's a very proud and mean son of a bitch and all of a sudden here comes this blonde haired idiot from New York and when I'm the WWF champion, the WWE champion, I'm coming to the Kemper Arena. We pumped the segment, so I come, I fly into town, I show up about 2 in the afternoon. My guys called me and said Harley Race came down here with a gun, he tried to light the ring on fire. They told me Harley said when I show up, he's gonna kill you. I had to go to the bathroom and my stomach was killing me. So I'm sitting on the toilet going to the bathroom. David Boy Smith, the British Bulldog said, Oh my god, the effing king is here. He's gonna kill you, Hogan. I pull up my wrestling yellow tights up. I don't even wipe my ass as fast as I could because I don't want to get caught up with my pants down and I don't have a fighting chance. I blow out of the bathroom. I turn around the corner and he puts the gun right in my face. He said, I should kill you here for coming in and doing this. This is Harley Race talking to me, and then he puts the gun down and he goes, I really need a job. I went, holy shit, I shook his hand brother, I was a huge fan, loved the guy to death anyway. Whilst that was Hogan's opinion of him, I don't think Lawman Don Slayton felt the same way. The West Texas promoter tried a Montreal screw job on the WWE Hall of Famer during a Russian chain match, but Harley figured out the Shady Booker's plan ahead of time and wrapped the chains around Slayton and dragged him around the ring to prevent it. Harley didn't just scrap with the big boys backstage, he had no problems fighting the fans either. The territory days were a dangerous time for many of these professional wrestlers and many had to defend themselves once the show was over. There was an incident where Harley was forced to fight a bunch of bikers. But despite the wild stories about Harley Race, the WWE legend was a well respected name who many considered had a heart of gold. Ravishing Rick Rude who knew that the ravishing one liked to get his hands dirty? Don't let the gorgeous hair and iconic moustache fool you. Don't F with Rick Rude. Before his days as a professional wrestler, Rude worked as a bouncer, so getting into bar fights was a common practice for him. But it was often reported that the former Intercontinental Champion was the one who instigated these fights. Bruce Pritchard recounted on his Something to Wrestle podcast that Rick and his girlfriend would head to the bar to cause some trouble. Rude liked watching other men hit on his girl, but only for the simple reason of starting a fight with these punks. The WWE Hall of Famer isn't just known for his antics at the bar as he had no problems putting fellow wrestlers in their place. Take the Ultimate Warrior. There were two different stories on the fight between Warrior and Rude backstage. One was that the Warrior had no respect for Rude and he felt like he didn't deserve to be in the IC title picture. Rude confronted him and put the Warrior on his ass. The other is the well-known version which is Rude confronted Warrior about being too stiff in the ring. Warrior dismissed his grievances, so Rude knocked him out for good measure. Whatever the case may be, the ravishing one could knock you out with style and steal your girl. Steve Blackman Steve Blackman was a legitimate fighter with a martial arts background, so the Lethal Weapon moniker wasn't just some gimmick as Steve Blackman could break you in half with ease. That situation almost came to fruition during the Brawl for All tournament. According to Bob Holly, Blackman was the reason rules were enforced for the infamous shoot fighting tournament. Holly recalled the rigorous training Blackman did to prepare for the tournament, however it wasn't the training that made Holly nervous about the former hardcore champion. It was a meeting where management explained that anything goes. Blackman apparently asked, so that means that if you want to take somebody's knee out with a kick, I can do that right? Management was actually nervous that Steve would kill somebody, but Blackman's reputation comes from kicking some serious ass backstage. Just ask the Big Show who was taken down by the former Black Belt with ease. However, his brutal beatdown of JBL put fear in many of his WWE colleagues. JBL had been known to be a backstage bully, unfortunately for the former WWE Champion, he messed with the wrong guy. The fight happened during the night Owen Hart passed away, as according to Road Dogg, Val Venus and Bob Holly, it wasn't much of a fight since Blackman had JBL lying on the floor dead to rights. The only reason JBL didn't go to the hospital is due to Blackman's foot getting caught in the straps of a bag. Holly recalled a former hardcore champion telling him if it weren't for that bag, John would be in intensive care right now. The Undertaker It's hard to not put a guy who choked out Kurt Angle in real life on the list. However, Taker isn't someone who's known for drunken fights or backstage bullying. Taker is a man who can handle himself without any problem, but wrestlers mainly didn't F with Taker because he was a well-respected veteran. The WWE star was considered the leader behind the scenes as according to Jim Cornette, the former WWE champion became a leader because of his professional approach to the business. Taker was looked at as a no-nonsense fucking guy. Don't fuck around, be professional. You know, and he had the the anti click His group of, you know, guys like with the, the Godwins and Fatu of the Samoan contingent, Fuji Yoko. Those guys that ever gonna fuck with anybody or conspire behind people's back. 
And that's where Undertaker got the reputation of being a locker room leader, but just being a guy that was one of the boys as opposed to the rapidly developing egos of the other little group. Taker forced Vince McMahon to face Bret Hart after the Montreal screw job. He also confronted Shawn Michaels about his refusal to drop the belt to Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 14. Taker made decisions that were best for business, and it'll be hard to find any name who didn't have respect for the WWE Hall of Famer. Andre the Giant Andre the Giant is an interesting case. Many have deemed the former WWE Champion as a gentle giant. Whether it was Hulk Hogan, Ted DiBiase or Bret Hart, the wrestling icon had respect of his peers, but if Andre didn't like you, then he wasn't afraid to let you know it. Andre the Giant was more like The Undertaker. He loved the business, and sure he had his demons, but no one could ever say that Andre the Giant never had a passion for professional wrestling. If Andre liked you, he would treat you with respect. If he didn't, well, guys, you should be happy he didn't pull a new jack. But Andre roughing up guys he didn't like had some consequences. Kamala Harris pulled a gun on the big man after their match. However, Andre gained a newfound respect for the veteran. That was often the case with most guys that he didn't like in the beginning. Andre the Giant was never a bully or a stirrer. He was just a man who looked down on wrestlers who didn't share his passion and love for the business. And New Jack. There's only one way to describe New Jack. Insane. New Jack didn't have an easy life growing up. He witnessed his father stab his mother, he robbed stores, and he spent some time in prison for aggravated robbery. New Jack was a gangster, and he brought that persona to professional wrestling for better or worse. New Jack was a popular act in ECW, however, the guy was never good inside the ring unless a weapon was in his hand. His gimmick is what got him over, but New Jack being himself was a danger to everyone around him. He even tried to end a man's life as a former ECW star threw wrestler Vic Grimes off a 40-foot scaffold. Now, to be fair, this incident is due to Grimes and New Jack falling off a 20-foot rig onto concrete, and New Jack suffered some severe brain damage and became blind in one eye. The rematch a year later was pure revenge for New Jack, who had admitted this several times in numerous interviews. However, the worst incident was a former ECW star stabbing Hunter Red nine times. Why isn't exactly clear, as he stated he went into the match without much of a plan. Hunter Red punched New Jack several times, and his response was to pull out a knife and stab him. The only reason Hunter Red didn't press any charges is because New Jack promised to turn the incident into a storyline, but the two wrestlers never saw each other again after the charges were dropped. New Jack's reputation preceded him into the WWE. He had a tryout, but politics prevented the ECW icon from getting a chance to ever perform in front of a WWE audience. Either way, it's probably for the best as New Jack was a different level of danger that the company wouldn't be able to control. But there you have it folks, WWE wrestlers that nobody effed with. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.